if you are someone that is right in the middle of your development, what would you do if I told you that you could get millions, literally hundreds of millions of resources for doing virtually nothing? Would that catch your interest? When talking about in-city resources, to do that, you need to fully appreciate the power of one. And we're talking about one general, one MPH, one mindset. Hi, and welcome to Red Ebony. I am Akayasha. You can call me Aka. And in this video, we're going to be talking about in-city resources. Now, for most people, when it comes to in-city resources, their thinking is very simple. Stick some tiles in there, do some research over here, case closed, right? And if we're being honest, some of you might actually be thinking the same way as well. The thing is that that kind of thinking could significantly hamper your ability to effectively pull in the resources that you need for your Ebony development. But since one of the things that we're trying to do here is to help you be the best you can be at this game, I've got you covered on that. So to avoid that situation or to help pull you out of that kind of thinking if you're already there, you need to fully appreciate the power of one. So we start off with one general. Shaja Alder. Most of you probably know this or have heard about her, but for anyone that hasn't, she is a unique general, literally one of a kind. Her main skill, she increases in-city resource production by 100% and increases the amount of food protected by 200% when she is the world general. She is the only general in the game that has that kind of skill. You can get her in the great general chest. Here she is right there. All you need to do, you need to make sure that you are getting the keys every day. Once you get her, you put her on the wall during non-PVP times. No need for books or starring or increasing her level. You could do that if you want. And if you have any questions on that, feel free to drop them in the comments down below. Next up, 1 MPH. And no, we're not talking about miles per hour here. In this case, 1 MPH refers to 1 million resources per hour. That is the main goal or objective that you need to have when it comes to in-city resources. Where do you find it? You simply go to your Monarch and go to Details. When you come over to the Resource tab, it shows you the speed of your resource production right there. Again, to reiterate, you need to make sure that these numbers are at least 1 million per hour for you to get the full benefits of your in-city resource production. For you to fully appreciate what we're talking about here, let's do some simple math, okay? Let's say you do achieve one MPH. So you have one MPH and 24 hours in a day. And if we take a 30 day month, that comes down to 720 million resources every month, just from in-city production, okay? We are literally talking about close to three quarters of a billion resources every month for very little work on effort. From where you are right now, just imagine how much help that would be if you were pulling in those resources every month. With that, you can really understand the power of one MPH. In my case, as you can see here, all of my resource production is over one MPH. So how do you achieve that? Well, first thing, you need Shaja, okay? That's a given. Next up, you need to set up your tiles with a decent distribution. So you need to make sure that you have enough of each of the different types of resource tiles to make sure that you can get to one MPH. There's no given number of each tile that you need to have, and you can always adjust your tile distribution at a later point. Just make sure that you have enough of each of the tiles to get you to one MPH for your four types of resources. The next thing that you need to focus on is research. We come to the academy and in the advancement tab here, you need to make sure that all of the items that are related to in-city resource production are maxed out or as close to the max as you can possibly get them. So of course, these starting levels are fully done. These ones as well, make sure that they are all done. And then we come to the advanced section here. Make sure that all these ones are done as well. We move down 
to the super section here, get all these ones done as well. Okay, so the next thing that we're going to look at, subsidies. When it comes to subsidies and in-city resource production, what you are looking at are China subsidies. Getting a China subsidy will give a certain percentage boost to your in-city resource production, depending on the quality or color of the subsidy that you get. In my case, I have only one China subsidy right here. It's a green subsidy. And we can see that for a green subsidy, you get an 8% resource production boost. And that is to all four resource types. So the more you get with better quality subsidies, the more boost you're going to have to your resource production. The next thing that we're going to look at, we're going to look at your buffs, your production buffs. The first one is offering. Now, when you offer, you get obviously prestige, you get Monarch XP, but you also get a boost to your in-city resource production for two hours. You can see it right there. So each time you offer, you get two hours of boost. The ideal situation that you want to have is to offer enough times to make sure that this buff is running for 24 hours. I'm sure that for some people, that might not be a sustainable level of offering that they can do. So offer as much as you can for your current level until you can work your way up to offer enough times to get that boost running 24 hours. You can do that either with gems or with tributes. The next thing is your production speed up buffs. And you can find those here under production. And these give you a 100% increase for your production for 24 hours. You need to make sure that these are always running. Okay? You only pop it on once every day and it's simple. And you have it running for all four types. Now, if we go to the inventory, I'm going to speed ups. Come all the way down here. You can see them there as well. Each one, you can click to compose to give you an advanced speed up, which will run for eight hours, but will give you a 200% boost to your production. These are fine, but not really sustainable to have them running every day. But here's a pro tip. The one time that you need to make sure that you actually have these running is during SVS. When SVS comes around, people are not able to gather. So that decrease in your ability to pull in resources during that period of time, you need to make sure that you have these advanced production buffs running during SVS. SVS will typically run for about two days. You will need three of these every day. So you need six for the entire SVS period. Pop one on, once the eight hours expires, put the next one on and keep running like that. Once SVS is over, switch back to the regular 24 hour and keep going at your normal pace. To get these production speed up buffs, you can get them at the wheel. Spin the wheel a few times, you get some. You can also get them at the market, which is the main place to get any. Focus on the options that come up that you buy with resources. And every time you visit your market and you see these there, be sure to pick them up. Okay. If you're really low and you want to get a bunch of them at once, you can also buy them with gems whenever they pop up. Finally, we'll look at Monarch Gear. Now, using Monarch Gear for your in-city resources is purely a situational boost because you can only have one gear on at a time. So if we come here to my Monarch, you can see I have the ore production crystal on. In my case, when I'm hitting bosses, I still get quite a bit of wounded. I need to heal my troops. Having this on will help to cover up for the amount of resources that I used up when I'm healing my troops. Depending on the situation that you are in, you might be a bit low on one resource or the other. In that case, you can switch between the crystal and put on the one that you want for that period of time. Once you've covered it up, you can switch it back again. Like I said, it's purely situational and you should really be aiming to get up to one MPH without having these crystals on. Now, when it comes to the power of one, there is one mentality that you need to have when it comes to in-city resources, and that is fuel your feed. The way this game works, everyone has certain periods where they do significant upgrades, whether that's keep upgrades or other building upgrades or even troop building, okay? Right now, we have the resource consumption event going on. 
you will expect a lot of people to be using up a lot of resources during this period of time. Whenever you have these instances of significant upgrades, you need to make sure that you're also including some increase to your resource intake capacity. Whether that is building or upgrading more tiles or doing more research for your in-city production, whenever you have these kind of upgrades or troop building where you use a lot of resources, you need to make sure that you're fueling your feed and boosting your resource intake ability. Doing this will ensure that until you reach the goal of 1 MPH, that you are consistently improving your resource production and fueling your feed until you can reap the max benefits for your development. So, if you like the content in this video, be sure to give it a like. I will be bringing out more content that will touch on Ebony development, so be sure to stay tuned for that. Thank you, Anaka signing out.